Hello and welcome to another beautiful blue sky day here in sunny Nova Scotia and if you haven't been here before welcome to my channel The Optimistic Gardener. My name is Steve Farley. So today I'm going to be planting this pear tree right here. So I bought this pear last year. It is um, pear concord. I like concord and I'm going to say it even though Mrs F has warned me not to but I do love a juicy pear. There's nothing quite like that refreshing when, when you get a real ripe one right into that refreshing juiciness so um, and they're also pears one of the best yielding of of your fruit trees so they're a good fruit tree to go and they um, they like a nice sunny position as most fruit trees do so we're gonna plant it away now and hopefully in a couple of years time I'll be having those juicy pears so a couple of considerations before um, you actually sighting you your pear. Um, I've already said um, it needs a nice sunny position, good free draining soil and I won't be adding anything um, to the actual um, hole when I start digging it but we'll come to that in a moment. Another consideration as well is most pear trees need a cross pollinator so they need another pear of, of a different uh, type so otherwise if you don't have that um, you won't always get a very good uh, yield or no yield at all of so you need a couple of pear trees and I've got um, Concord and Luscious and I, in another um, video I'll be showing you um, I'll be growing the other pear tree as an espalier as part of a living fence but we'll come to that one later as well. So uh, on to digging the hole I think. Okay so that's the hole dug. Let's have a quick look to see uh, the dimensions and, and what I've actually done there. Okay, so as you can see, there's our, our hole, standard as holes go. Um, and here's our pear tree up which I've dug out. So a couple of points. Um, as I said, I'm not going to put any actual um, any compost or anything like that in the hole. But what I am going to do is where I've dug out the top, um, this was actually a bit of creeping, uh, creeping flocks. I'm just going to stick that in the bottom of the hole because we want um, to create a bit of a mound for the roots to sit on and then the roots can flow down either side of that mound and then that mound's going to rot down over over a bit of time and that and that will provide some nice compost type material for uh, for the actual pear itself but not straight away because we don't want to be feeding it straight away so uh, another couple of points here where the actual graft is so the inside curve of the graft we want it generally pointing away from um, from the sun okay so what i'm going to do is get my trusty assistant ethan hello. To... <laughs> hello indeed so if you hold that upright for me mate now as you can see like i said we've got the curve of the um the graph line facing away from the sun, uh, the sun is that way, or coming around that way anyway. Um, and the level line is about an inch or so above the highest roots and obviously the graft is, uh, is above, the, above the earth as well. So we'll keep that nice and straight. I've got a bit of clay like soil here so um, what I'm going to do is give it a bit of a, bit of a drink first. Hold that straight, son. That thing must be thirsty. It's going to be thirsty. Watch this to grow some nice juicy, nice juicy pears. Right, hold that straight as you can, mate. You got, you reckon that's straight? And if on the top, it keeps flapping around. Keep it. All right, I'm going to make sure. This Straighten that up a bit like that, that's it. Ooh. And what we'll do, I want to make sure this make sure there's no air pockets down here. Get it down here nice and tight. That's good, let's get some more in. So 
Don't look at it, come. Stand back. Okay, so that's it, all nicely earthed in, filled in, nice and nice and sturdy. It's only small, it doesn't need a, a stake at this time of life. I want to give it a bit of a, um, let it let it get its roots down as well. Um, one of the reasons that I didn't put any um, actual, you know, compost or definitely no manure or anything like that in there is because you want to encourage the roots to get out and search for the food and water so they can, you know, if you've just got all the the, uh, the compost in that little area they're likely to be more happy where they are so you want to force them to search out and get some um and get some food and water and then really spread those roots out to to give it a good base so ethan you've got to give it a bit of a, a water sun okay. so on the water in front you know for the next um for the next uh for a good month now i'll give it a gallon a day if, it, if it's not rained, keep going mate, just drop it all in there son, until there's none left. And then, um, <clears throat> and then every other day for the next month, just to see how it's, uh, see how it's performing really. If it's, you know, if it's looking stressed, the leaves curled up, you need to give it a bit more water. If it doesn't, then, it, then it's okay. So the last thing to do after we've um, actually stuck it a load of water in is to give it a good mulch. Um, and I've, I've done some other another video on mulching. Mulching is one of the most important things. Again, you want to give your pear tree the um, the best chance it can to get going. So a good mulch is going to shade the roots. It's going to stop any weeds coming up, or quite a few of the reeds. So the reeds, the weeds. So it's not going to have to compete with them for the food and water. Um, and then when it breaks down, uh, that will provide it with some good nourishment as well. I'm giving it a mulch of um, not quite leaf mould because it hasn't uh, this year's hasn't fully broken down yet but a good a good mulch of of, of leaf mould and it's not going to provide too much in the way of nutrients to start with but it will break down nicely and provide a good shade for the roots. A good couple of inches about a foot or so all the way around There we go. Jobs are good. Can't wait to get biting into that juicy pear. Beauty.